Coach EJ here with your next installment of Titans Takedown. This is where I take four to five questions that I get from Quora, Reddit, or YouTube and go ahead and answer them here on this forum. I do my best to answer them in their entirety. Sometimes the questions can be a little difficult. Uh, we're going to go straight into it. I see here, uh, how do I think the best Muay Thai fighters in the world or how far do I think they would go inside the UFC? You know, I think... I don't think they would ever be top 10. I'm just gonna, just to answer the question immediately. I'm not sure where they would land though. I, mean, I think most uh, most divisions have anywhere about from like close to like 80 to 100 people inside the division. So that can that can be tough. I think they would get past like maybe the first like 20, 30 people just based off pure skill. Uh, the, the best Muay Thai fighters in the world right now have awesome kicks, uh, the movements, they're tough as nails. But in the very end, MMA is, is, is like, I want to say like 60% grappling, man. I'd like to say that people can stand and everything. You may start there as well, but for the most part, you're going to the ground at some point or at the very least getting pressed against the cage. And if these fighters, uh, if all they have is a tight clinch to go ahead and combat that, I can't see them, you know, passing the, the lower tier and advancing onto the middle range and even up to the top 10 if they can't get, you know, adapt their game to that. And coming from that particular world and, and how long they've been doing it there, it might just be so foreign to them to even the idea of jujitsu or wrestling, I, like I said, I don't think they would go that far. I think best level, beat one or two guys, and they start getting beat from there. Because if, even if you do understand that you're going to go against someone that's that high level of a striker, you immediately go to the ground, and that would be their weakness. So I, I can't see, uh, I can't see them hitting top tens by any means. All right, next question: Why didn't Sage Northcutt use more kicks in his fight? given he's extremely flexible and athletic. Well, you know, this kind of plays into our previous question about Muay Thai fighters. And it's not necessarily the, the straight Muay Thai that what Sage does, but he's a, a superior striker. You know, he's a very, very gifted striker. Those kicks, those punches, his movement, it's fantastic. But those things take setups. And, and, and if you don't set those up right, they leave, they leave you very, very vulnerable. Like uh, if you do a spin kick, and someone just smothers your kick, all of a sudden they, they're, they're grabbing you behind your back. You know, and that's a bad position for someone like Sage Northcutt, who, at least from what it seems like, and from what I've you know seen on television and what I've heard through like you know gyms, is his grappling is not really there. You know, he's probably like mid-range blue belt, if that. And I'm sure his athleticism, flexibility, and strength has gone a, a good amount of ways as far as grappling goes. But in the very end, when you're at the UFC level, m most people have a good base of jujitsu under them, bare minimum, you know? So, and the people that do get there without it are, are, are small exceptions. But, so let's say he's one of those, cool, there's still a glaring weakness there, and putting yourself in, when you do those kind of spins, kicks, and, and look to have some flash to it, those flash, those flashy uh, strikes cost time. And, and they put you in, sometimes put you in vulnerable spots, and I don't think he felt comfortable doing that uh, after he paid for it with one loss and I think altogether that not necessarily that fear built up But there's hesitance there because there should be there It's not practical and unless you're gonna get your skill set your your grappling skill set or take down defense up to a certain point You can't be taking those risks So I think that's ultimately why he didn't use as much uh, You know flashy kicks and movements and stuff like that um, inside his fights All right next question why do MMA fighters trade more punches without dodging more often than boxers? Well, there's a couple things. So without, <laughs> without you know, uh, talking smack on my brother, the fact is boxing is a specialty sport. You know, you're, you're only training hands, you know. So, and the, the thing about that, there's a lot of areas that you can find, like, let's call them safe zones, safe pockets. An example is if I'm boxing and, I, and then someone's hands are up, if I put my head between his hands, I'm safe here. It's gonna, I'm gonna see when he tries to go for an uppercut. I'm gonna be able to, that's why bo certain bo Mexican boxers kind of snug them, you know, bring themselves in and hug in, get real close to their, to their opponent. And so that's just a, a way to be kind of safe. Your body's so open, but your head is like protected to some degree because it's just the area it's in. And the same thing when you kind of, when people kind of slip out to that far right low side, it's the same thing. There's a, there's a safe pocket there. And you see Mayweather and other boxers do it all the time. So that being said, so there's safer zones right there. You don't got those safety pockets, you know, inside uh, MMA. There, there's always some sort of weapon or tool that they can use to attack you. And if you and if your head's moving, 
and your legs are, are, are stationary, they can chop your legs. You know, if I keep it straight down the line, um, I'm vulnerable to just the normal, the normal attacks that, uh, the, the, more, the, the normal variable attacks that you can hit up, up the middle. So it's hard, there's more tools to attack you with. So that's why I say it's hard to dodge, let's say, okay? That's one thing. But secondly, it's in all, in all reality, MMA fighters don't have the same skill set. We're not nearly as good with our hands as, as boxers are. They only work their hands. We work, we work punches, elbows, knees, kicks, takedowns, chain wrestling. Um, we work jujitsu. I mean, the, the nuances in jujitsu and striking, just even just those separate sports in itself, take ten plus years to master by themselves. If you just did them by themselves, let alone you try and combine both and try to learn them all at the same time, and you only been doing it for five to six years, and you made it to the UFC. Cool, you're tough as nails, and you learn how to mesh well and fight well, but. You can't master that. And defense, more specifically on striking, is harder to learn. Like you could, it's easy to learn the, the first one, the first part of defense, which is like your footwork, just to back away and get out of the pocket. But it's hard to know how to, how to sidestep the pocket and still be within striking distance of your opponent while, while dodging them. Having the, the, the footwork and, and, and uh, having the, the head movement as well with that. And knowing when to block and what's the highest probability of an attack, if I'm slipping this way, I should point my hands up here because generally speaking, they could they could maximize their their hit. Like all these little nuances and how they ebb and flow together, but that doesn't happen. You know, you don't you don't get all that dissection. You when you barely start doing MMA, they're gonna make you do the offensive side of things earlier when they shouldn't. You know, when you go to like a real old school style boxing gym, they're gonna make you drill technique, drill footwork, drill bags, double handed. You know, like. A wide rail, slip rope, I mean, so many different things. Drills are gonna be about moving out the way and not taking so much damage. I mean, it's a different emphasis and philosophy that if you go just by the purest form. But you don't have that luxury of time with MMA because you need to cram as much as you can in. Because there's just so many different sports that you have to like pull from. So, um, and I, so if I had to say why they don't dodge, because they, A, either one, they don't know how to. Two, it generally is a tough man sport, you know? Uh, when it, you only have four ounce gloves, and they, even though it feels the impact is probably the same, almost the same PSI, it feels significantly different when you get hit with a four ounce glove compared to the 16 ounce. You know, and uh, so, and then there's vulnerabilities that, you know, um, like if I look away or dodge or duck under, I can get knees and kicks. So sometimes I'm just scared to do these other movements. So I'd rather just take a hit or block and not necessarily dodge because I'm thinking I'm vulnerable if I dodge in certain instances. So that's another thing as well. But ultimately, you know, uh, MMA just hasn't got up to that skill set yet. And the, the people that do don't really take too much damage. You had Anderson Silva in his prime head movement was, was fantastic, and he hardly ever blocked. It was more slipping than anything else, and, and footwork, and and uh, yeah, he had everything down, dialed in. So he didn't take much damage at least initially. And then you know now he is what he is. But as, as everyone has a limit for sure. But you know, and be, at one point he was he was hot. And people like that, people like that, you can tell have worked defensive movements, know the nuances of defense, you know, and that's just something you don't generally don't get in MMA. All right, next question. For Muay Thai and MMA, what's the trick to stop backing up subconsciously and start moving forward? So I will say this is a, there's a couple things to, for this. So one thing is, I'll, I'm going to say it's natural. Like if you're new to, to combat sports, and someone throwing strikes at you, whether it be punches or kicks, you're gonna immediately back up. That's like the most common reaction you should have. Okay, same thing with headshots, you're gonna veer it away, etc. So that's not uncommon. But the thing about learning how to fight and learning, you know, this kind of the, whatever training you're doing, is you learn how to like let the punches miss you, but still would be still be within the range to strike them back. Or you could have a true counter where when, right when they throw their attack, you're throwing yours. But Either way, our initial response is not necessarily that. Okay, so one thing you can do to, to uh, make sure that you are building the right habits is when you're doing drills, let's say you're doing apartment drill and you're doing punches to chopping a kick. Well, after the kick, reset your stance and circle. Don't back away, because I know it's gonna be your partner's turn after, right? You give punches and kicks, they do it back. But make sure that you circle, keep your hands up, and just build good habits that way. So. Whatever you drill is generally how you spar, how you spar is generally how you fight. So, so if you're starting on that base level, make sure we're doing the right motions and movements when we're on, the, when we're on that, you know, with our partners. Uh, second, when you're a good coach, will make sure they hold the mitts correctly for you. So what I mean by that, they'll hold the mitts for you, they throw punches, but they'll make you circle and make you press forward. So 
they're not gonna let you give up that real estate. And that's the kind of a term they use. So if I gain this land and gain this real estate, I'm not gonna give that back to you. I gain this. It's the opponent's you know, responsibility to back up or I gotta make them back up. Okay, so that's a coach can kind of guide you with that inside the mid game. Um, sometimes it's just the fact that someone's giving you too much pressure. You might be a technical fighter and you wanna keep someone back. Well, you gotta learn how to, how to, snap, how to snap punches to make sure that keeps them off you. At the same time, learning to teep if you're doing something with kicks. Good teeps keep every, keep people uh, legs length away, which is generally uh, outside the, the range of people's hands. So you'll have a peace of mind and don't not, not have like such fear about being smothered. So that's another thing you can start developing as well, like spa you know, space with snapping or punches and having good teeps. Uh, the last thing I would say is learning the safe zone. So if you're in boxing, you know, if you press forward and you get under someone's arms a little bit and you get between their hands like your head's right here, I, it's hard for me to come under and hit. I have to back away. I have to make an adjustment to be able to hit your face. So I kind of, you know, if, if you're smothering me like right here, you're going to feel safer here, at least for your face, right? Uh, there's other pockets down here in the lower right side if I'm right-handed. If I'm lefty, it's lower left. You know, where you can hide your head, you know, and you're going to have these little areas, these little safe zones, safe pockets that you can rest in. Um... Or there's even ways just to tie up, right? I go punch, 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 I come and I tie up, and then from there it makes it a little easier for me to maneuver my back force. Go probably back against the ropes, I can grab and tie up and then turn my body, and now my back's to the rest of the ring. You know, so there's little things like that that you can learn that will keep you uh, in, in the areas that you want to are safer. You know, so that's another thing that you can do as well to make sure that you don't have a bad habit of, uh, of backing up based off fear or based off just availability of punches, right? So, yeah. So, next question. And last question, is it okay to defend yourself against a girl if she's physically attacking you? And so, that's a tricky question because like, it's not like a question you can answer that you can put in every single situation. A lot of situations are different. Uh, what I'll say is, if anybody is attacking you, um, Physically, but let's say they're attacking you with a pipe. <laughs> Do something to take that pipe away, get yourself in the safe area. You're better off running if you can, but if you have to defend yourself, take it away. If you can do something like that, attack them if you need to. Um, that's like a life or death situation kind of thing. But if you're just talking about like, let's here's an example. Let's say that I'm trying to break up a fight. These women are attacking each other and they're hitting me. They're physically attacking me. And then, they're, then one of them turns on me and starts physically attacking me. It's okay. If I don't feel it's gonna knock me out, there's ways to dis disarm or disarm, you know, at least disengage. Okay, so there's ways to disengage, back up, say you're sorry, and it's the same thing for men, for men too. It's not just a woman thing. Like, an, an example is like, let's say, uh, I, I'm a little more skilled when it comes to fighting. So a lot of times when, it don't matter the size of the person, I don't feel too threatened. And because I don't feel threatened, I'm willing to walk away, take some crap talking that they do to me. Um, and they try to press up against me, I don't care. You know, I, like I just let it like go off my back. It, you know, for, you know, so, and you gotta have that kind of state of mind, that confidence in yourself and, and knowing that you have the ability to defend yourself. And if you have that with anyone, whether it be a, a man or a woman, you're gonna find a way to circumvent that situation where you don't have to physically assault them. If, if it's like I said, one of the life or death things, well, it's life or death. Yeah, do what you need to do to stay alive. I get that. You know, attack them physically for sure. But if it's not, you can find a way. You just gotta have peace of mind that you're and, and know that you're capable of doing it. And if you do, then it doesn't matter if they hit you ten times. You know, you shouldn't let your ego jump into that. You know, you're trying to do the nice thing, the right thing. And, and sometimes, and sometimes that's just that's that's the harder way. You know, so um, I would say it's very very circumstantial. But it was like life or death for sure. All right. And that will be it for this segment of Titans Takedown. If you have any more questions for me, please feel free to list them in the comments. You can also find me on Quora under Ernest Chavez. And you can also find me on Reddit under GoatheadB13. You can ask me questions there, and I'll do my best to answer any and all questions in their entirety. If you like what you saw, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Coach EJ.